Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at cold starting the Community UH-60 Lima Blackhawk. Uh, but before uh, we get into the cockpit and start switching things on, I just thought I'd point out a few external things um, just to get those covered. Now this bit up the top here or is known as the disco ball or um, disco light and is part of the um, infrared jamming suite um, also known as the ANALQ144 uh, basically um, it, it's, um, it consists of um, a heated silicon carbide block which radiates heat out to a, um, a wide area and um, it, it does this in a sort of a pulsing action and in the um, early days of um, infrared missiles um, the um, reticule on the missile would rotate uh, this would pulse to get in in time with the reticule as it's as it spun and what this could do uh, would stop the missile from locking and um, being, being unable to launch uh, and also after launch if um, they did manage to get a lock on the pulsing would confuse the missile um, and tell the missile it was off to one side so basically bypassing the helicopter altogether. Uh, since then though um, they've become a bit more sophisticated um, and uh, have been able to get around this pulsing action. Um, so they have been working on the um, ALQ-144A um, but I'm not sure if this is the A variant or just the 144 variant but it's inoperative at the moment but it is is planned for future updates so that's something to look forward to um, the stubby wings I've just added them uh, empty this is known as the external store support system and um, is plumbed up for the um, crash worthy external fuel system which you can carry the, uh, four 200 uh, gallon tanks so I'll stick those on all good extends the range nicely but as you can see the, you've got your gunner either side and you can uh, guess where I'm going with this if you've got a gun sticking out the side there you're severely restricted on um, what you can actually aim for so um, it's not very common that you'll see uh, UH-60s carrying more than two tanks simply for the, uh, the um, visibility in the range for the uh, the side gunners but I just thought I'd cover those two things because when I first saw the module I'm not knowing much about helicopters well I need to look at um, but the systems on them uh, I had no idea what that was and um, looked into it, it's quite an interesting bit of kit and as for the uh, the external store support system I uh, thought that would that was something worth pointing out as well so there you go um, now that that's covered uh, we'll get into the cockpit right so we're in the cab um, and I just want to point out before I get anything switched on if you want to uh, add the external store support system and the fuel tanks while in sim like this you will need to have the engine off and the cockpit door or the pilot door open otherwise um, nothing will happen so um, just uh, thought I'd give you a heads up on that right so we want to bring this bad boy to life so we're going to want to find the battery switch which is up here in the overhead panel the second one in we're going to right click oh, wrong one and right click the second one and then we're going to find the generators one and two here and we're going to right click those okay so we've got batteries on next is lighting 
adjust as needed um, these four twist knobs here and there's four on the co-pilot side as well okay next we are going to want to fire up the auxiliary power unit now in the manual it says switch on APU and APU generator so I've been using the APU switch here and then switching the generator afterwards but that has caused the AHRS um, to not function properly so I've been doing it in reverse and that seems to be okay doing it that way so we switch on the generator first right click switch on the APU so the APU is on, the generator is now on. If we look down at the AHRS it is now aligning. Before it, it just wasn't doing anything. Right so now that that's um, up and running we'll get some systems up and running so put the uh, tail wheel lock on. We're going to put the auto stab uh, stabilator auto control on and you can see that we now have the um, stabilator in the down position which is uh, which which was done automatically. We'll switch on the stability systems and trim system and the boost. Um, we can use FPS if we want. I prefer to not use it as I feel that um, flying is a lot more smoother. Uh, the idea is that the FPS will actually fight you if you're doing anything too aggressive. Um, so I tend to have that off so that I have the freedom to do what I want with it. Um, once those are on we can then look towards switching on the engines. So we are going to switch on the fuel cock for engine 2 and then we are going to start engine 2 by pressing this button and let the N2 speed up a little bit Okay, and then right click engine 2 to start it. You see the RPMs are building now. Blades should start spinning, which they are. Okay, so I'm press master, master caution there. So uh, we'll get engine 2 settled before starting engine 1. We'll look across the systems to make sure that everything is good. We'll, uh, zero out the barometric altimeter. Okay. Just wait for that to settle. While that's doing that, we can switch on some other systems. Switch on the ADF. Switch on the VOR system. Um, come across, switch on the radios, um, and we can come back here. We can switch on helmet mounted display if we want to, but I find that's a bit too in your face and um, could do with being uh, scaled down a bit. I'm not sure if it's really like that in the real thing, um, but that really does take. Um, take a lot out of your concentration with all that in your face so um, I tend to have that off. Um, switch on the RWR system there's the power there. Uh, RWR is here switch on the brightness up and down here. Uh, I don't have anything in in the mission that will set it off um, so um, that will stay clear for the moment. Um, we'll get engine 1 started now the button. Wait for the N2 to speed up. Okay, and then we're going to right click again. Okay, and you see the RPMs will build up for that. And again, we're just going to wait for the uh, engine to settle. While it's doing that, we're going to switch on the flight computer to MGRS here. So right click till we get to MGRS. We're going to press enter 
and enter again as I don't have a flight plan there's no point in me going in through all of that and checking it so enter enter or um, set it uh, to flight mode uh, give us our, our wind speed and direction and also it will um, put our bearing compass it will align it properly um, and you would to, to, to make sure that it has done it properly we can check with the compass here to make sure that they're both showing the same which they are so that's all good now that engine one is now settled we can advance the throttle and get all three greens here And that is pretty much it for a, a cold start. Um, obviously, when more systems uh, become available, um, they will obviously be added to the um, to the flight uh, the startup procedure. Uh, but now that we're all ready to go, we can now shut down the APU. So, looking at the overhead panel for the APU generator, we're going to left click and left click on the generator switch there, no, the APU switch sorry, wait for the APU light to go out and that's it we really are ready to roll. So um, that's cold starting the community UH60 Blackhawk, um, I hope that you found that helpful. Um, it's done through the manual um, so if there are any issues you can refer back to that which is um, downloadable from uh, their website and um, yeah I'll um, I'll put them out actually I'll put a link to the manual in the um, in the description so anyway yeah that's cold start in the Black Hawk not too difficult um, I find it uh, starting aircraft the fixed wings are a lot easier but then again I've been flying the fixed wings for quite a long long time so I find that second nature but helicopters because it's a totally different layout I find a bit confusing so thank you for bearing with me and as always take care and I'll see you in the next one